Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Grounded. I'm really excited you're here, and today we are talking about the three systems of balance. Now, we know we talked about central disorders and peripheral disorders and how the vestibular system works and all that good stuff, but I really wanted to do more of a deep dive this morning on how exactly the vestibular system functions with its other two systems. So let's dive in. Okay, so let's first start with just your three systems of balance that work together. You first have your vision. Now, this system is the one that we all know as the way we see the world around us. And our vision can be off. We might need to go to the optometrist. We might need to go to the ophthalmologist. We might have vision issues. But vision is the fastest way that we can get information to our brain because it's right there. It's obvious. It's in front of our face. For most people, not for everyone but it is a very, very, very fast system of getting information to your brain. So your brain interprets it very quickly as well. The next system of balance is your proprioception. This is the way that we feel the world around us. Our proprioception is the way that you know, even if you're wearing shoes, if you're standing on a really soft carpet or if you are standing on the concrete. It's how you know where your joints are in space. So like if you close your eyes and you put your arm out in front of you and then you can bend it and extend it, you know where your arm is in space, right? Every Most people, I shouldn't say everyone, but most people know where their extremities are in space. And this is all thanks to the amazing proprioception. Now, the third system of balance, which is the reason a lot of us are here, is your vestibular system. Now, your vestibular system is really very important. It's not as fast as your vision, but it is the checks and balances of your vision and proprioception. Now, I can make a couple of different analogies of how this works, and I'll make a couple so that you have a couple to kind of pull from, and each analogy works a little bit different. I like to say the analogy of the U.S. government. It doesn't matter which side of the aisle you stand on, truly. And I don't care, frankly. All I care about is that the U.S. government has three branches. We have the legislative branch, which is Congress, which is the Senate and the House. We have the executive branch, which is the White House. And then we have the judicial branch, which is the Supreme Court. Now, this is not a history lesson, I promise, but this is three different systems. And what we know, especially if you live in the United States, is that they do not always work together. They don't. Sometimes one person thinks this and one other branch thinks that, and they just like cannot come to a conclusion and it gets all jumbled and confusing. And then the rest of American people are like, what, literally what is going on? That is exactly what's happening in your brain. But I'll give you another example in case that one doesn't click. Imagine you have a three-piece band. You have a drummer, you have a singer, and you have a lead guitarist. If you have all three of these, and let's say the singer and the guitarist are playing the same song, but your drummer is like, I forgot what set we're on. I forgot what song we are in our set list. I'm going to play a different song. And the beat is wrong. It's too fast or it's too slow. And the the singer and the guitarist are like, what is happening? Like, it just doesn't make sense. That that system of checks and balances is getting jumbled and sending a confusing signal to the crowd who's trying to listen to the song and going like, what is going on? And you can also think about this. Actually, Actually, I can't think of a third example. So we'll go with those two, either the band or the government. One of those two hopefully clicks for you. But basically, there are three systems of balance. They work together all the time, and they are supposed to help you with your systems of checks and balances to say, hey, this is fast, or this is slow, or this is we're going this direction or that direction, or we're in this position, or we're in that position. And even if one is wrong, the other two can kind of put that check and balance in place. So 
sort of like the branches of the U.S. government. If one gets too powerful, the other ones can check it. That being said, this is exactly like identical to how your vestibular system works. So your vestibular system, or I should say your systems of balance work, your vestibular system is your inner ear system. It's the peripheral system, and it's sending a signal to your brain all the time saying, I'm looking forward, left, right, we're accelerating, we're decelerating, like whatever, whatever that's telling your brain, we're going in a circle, we're in a straight line. It's tracking all sorts of cool stuff. When we are thinking about that, sometimes we really are accelerating. And then our vision will also say, hey, yep, we're definitely accelerating. And then our proprioception is like, I'm not so helpful here, but like sit in our butt in a seat. And so like, I'm in a car, therefore I can be going this fast, right? And so all of these things play a role together, but let's talk about a time where this could either work really well or not work really well. And this is the parking lot example. I think this is an example we give very, very frequently, frankly, because it just kind of makes sense. When we are thinking about our systems of balance, imagine that you are in the driver's seat of a car and you've just parked in a parking lot. Now, I always like to make this in a Trader Joe's parking lot. And for some reason, what comes to mind when I talk about this is the Trader Joe's in New Orleans, Louisiana. I don't know why. When I lived there, I went to this specific Trader Joe's. I couldn't tell you which one it is. I know there's more than one. And it just had this like actually sort of normal parking lot. I remember there was like a really nice jewelry store in there with really nice watches. I did not go in there. I just remember it was near there if you live in New Orleans. Anyway, it's not a totally terrible Trader Joe's parking lot, but I still like to imagine this. I'm parked in a Trader Joe's parking lot. There are two cars next to me, and I have just pulled in to my parking spot. And in this lot, the car to my left, if you're in the UK, it's to the right, the car to my left backs out. Now, I my vision sees, okay, cars moving backwards, therefore, I must be moving forward. Your visual system is the fastest of the systems. And so it's saying like, yep, we're definitely moving forward because that car is moving backwards, right? But your vestibular system, which is a little bit slower, it's supposed to be, a little bit slower, says, nope, actually, we're not tracking any acceleration or deceleration. We're totally fine. So your body and your reflexes work so incredibly fast that it is likely that by the time you like notice that you're not moving you've already slammed on the brake pulled up the that you've already slammed on the brake pulled up the emergency brake made sure that like you're really not moving your heart rate's probably jacked up you're getting a little bit of an adrenaline response but then you're like oh i'm not moving it's fine and you could just move along your day that's how a normal vestibular system proprioception, like systems of balance interact. But if you have a vestibular disorder, this is where this gets a little bit tricky. When you are in this exact same situation, so I'm in my Trader Joe's parking lot in New Orleans, which again, I don't know why I just associate this story with this, but I do. I'm in my parking lot and to the left of me, the car reverses. If I have a vestibular disorder, my vision is something that I am dependent on because my vestibular system is probably not working if I have a per peripheral vestibular disorder as well as it should, especially if I haven't compensated in vestibular rehab yet. Or if I have a central vestibular disorder, that my brain is not processing the information that's being sent from my peripheral system to my brain. And therefore, I'm not getting the signal anyway. So like, I, my peripheral vestibular system could be like super fast sending the right signal, but then my brain is like, ha, oh, we're going to ignore that because we're not processing it correctly. And then you have to rely on your vision. Being visually dependent is a security mechanism, but it doesn't always work. So again, we're in our car, the car reverses on our left, and we feel like we're moving forward because our vision says, hey, we're moving forward because this car is moving back out of our peripheral vision. And our vestibular system doesn't kick in quickly enough. And by the time we turn our head, we don't even turn our head because we're already dizzy. We're like, I'm not going to turn my head. That's going to be uncomfortable. So I slam on the brakes. I'm like, why am I moving forward? Oh my goodness, this is so uncomfortable and really scary. And then the dizzy, anxious, dizzy cycle starts. I know that this has happened to more than one of you listening. 
And I know that this is a thing because this is something that people tell me very frequently that happens. Now, of course, there are many, many, many scenarios where the where these systems don't match up together. And of course, that's what causes so much dizziness. But it's really, really, really important for us to remember, hey, we can reintegrate these systems together and make them stronger again. And whether or not you should go to vestibular rehab for that, whether or not you should use like a comprehensive approach for vestibular migraine for that, whatever that's going to look like for you is going to be super, super different. But you want to be making sure that you're doing the right thing for your specific diagnosis, which is what this podcast is for. And of course, if you're like really feeling lost or even if you need like a little bit of an extra leg up or you feel like you hit a plateau or you don't know where to start, vestibular group fit. It is for you. It is the Oak method. I My method is the Oak method. I need to trademark it, but everything I do is the Oak method. Whether you see me one-on-one for VRT, for coaching, for functional wellness, for uh, vestibular group fit in a group program, in a small group program, literally whatever it is, it's the Oak method. It's the exact same method. It's just the way that you choose to do it. We're going to reintegrate these systems, build your threshold, all that good stuff. What you want to remember is that to reintegrate these, you have to remind your brain and body, hey, I'm safe. This is okay to do. You have to tell your brain, sometimes my eyes are lying to me. and I actually need to listen to my inner ear. I actually need to listen to my proprioception. Your eyes are not always telling the truth, and that is visual dependence. But visual dependence, again, it's a safety mechanism. It's a mechanism that's dedicated to making sure you can stay upright because your brain and body's entire job is to make sure, hey, am I upright? Can I stay upright? It's really, really, really important. So if you think about it, you're like, okay, I really, really want to not fall over. That's obviously the goal, right? is not falling over and not feeling super dizzy all the time. Also a goal, but keeping your head upright is a, is a good goal to have for your just body's natural reaction of stuff. So when you're thinking about that, your brain is like, okay, I need to find a way to stay upright. And my vestibular system, vestibular, vestibular system is not necessarily sending me accurate and reliable information or I am not able to process that information because of something like vestibular migraine, for instance. If that is the case, your eyes are like, your brain is like, okay, we're just going to rely on our eyes for everything. But this causes problems. This causes problems in the parking lot scenario where you can't trust your eyes. This causes problems because your proprioception and vestibular systems are supposed to take over when you are in a dark area and you cannot use your eyes because it's dark outside. This also causes a problem in the scenario where you're in the grocery store and everything is so overstimulating that you have to start to ignore things. So should you be reliant on your eyes for stuff? Yes. If you can see 100%, use your eyes. But you also need to practice not using your eyes in order to be better at doing stuff in the dark. You also have to be practice using your eyes, but ignoring it as a signal. And that's really hard. And what I mean by that is you use your eyes. Let's say you are standing on a beach and there's waves and the waves are like, oh my gosh, this is really, really irritating to me because they're like moving. And whenever I see movement, it's just something that I cannot tolerate. To get better at this, you have to go to the beach every day stare at the waves for five seconds, like really not a lot of time and remind your brain, I am not moving. I am safe. I am still, I'm not moving. The waves are moving. I'm not moving. Just because I see motion doesn't mean I'm moving. And this is a really hard thing to do. And it takes a lot of repetitions. And the beach example is especially difficult because typically you're standing on sand. And when you're standing on sand, that like creates a whole other difficult aspect because of the proprioception. You're not on a firm surface. And if you were on a firm surface, your body would be able to be like, okay, I'm on a firm surface. Therefore, at least like I know I can stand still. So that adds a whole other layer to it. But what we really want to know and what we really want to remember is that reintegrating these systems requires a lot of repetition 
and typically requires vestibular rehab therapy. Now, we do have exercises for vestibular visual vestibular integration in vestibular group fit. They are in the vestibular neuritis course, but they can also be accessed in other um, educational portions. If you go to education and then you click, if you're already a member, you go to the education section and then you click, um, what is it called? The little filter on the right-hand side, it will say by exercises <clears throat> and how to dose them and stuff. So that will all be in there. But you want to remember, okay, I know that my eyes are lying to me. How do I rely more on my vestibular system? If you have gotten into the dizzy, anxious, dizzy cycle, which is not your fault, go listen to the podcast episode by Emily Kostalnik and I about this. It's just one of the, it's maybe the third or fourth episode. It's really, really good. We talk a lot about the dizzy, anxious, dizzy cycle and it's helpful. If you are in the dizzy, anxious, dizzy cycle, or you have any fear associated with dizziness, which again, most people do because dizziness is scary. You want to remind yourself, okay, Hey, I'm safe in this situation. I'm okay. In this situation, I am going to remind my body that I'm safe. I am okay. I am able to rely on my vestibular system. And at first you might not be able to, at first you might have to do so much grounding and so much breathing in order to even be able to feel calm before you do that, which again, we talk a lot about this in the vestibular rehab episode, um, in order to get to this place. So what you really, really, really want to try and focus on is number one, can I breathe? Can I ground? Can I feel comfortable and confident in my insert scenario here? Number two, can I use my eyes, but remind my brain, hey, my eyes are lying to me. Just because a car is passing me doesn't mean I'm moving, right? And then can I do it in different environments and on different platforms? So like, can I put a foam pad under my feet? Can I put a, I don't know, can I stand on sand? Can I stand on grass rather than concrete or hardwood floor? Like what are the things that I can do to change this up so my proprioception is now working as well? So to recap this very quick episode, our three systems of balance are proprioception or somatosensory. That's the way we feel the world. Our vestibular system, which is the way we track and discover movement, and our visual system, which is the way we see the world. All of these need to ultimately work together in order for us to stay upright and comfortable. But if one of these systems shuts down, our vision, like a total dictator, just takes over. It's a dictator vi visual system, takes over and says, hey, I'm in charge now. Everything I say goes. And when that starts to happen, we start to rely on other signals less and less and less and less and less until we don't rely on them at all, which is really problematic because in those scenarios, we say, now I can't use my vestibular system to track whether we're accelerating. So if my eyes are moving, I must be moving. And that will cause a lot of feelings of like sickness and uh, dizziness and nausea and things like that. So if you have any questions about this, please, please, please let me know. Drop it in the comments if you are on Spotify and or send me a DM on Instagram or TikTok. Thank you so much. I will talk to you next time. I love you. Bye.